So I wanted to show you my cleavers patch. It goes all the way around this maple tree. And I've been cultivating this patch for many years now, about six years. It started out just as a little patch, but I just <laughs> keep talking to it and I keep making sure that there's plenty of burrs and uh, seeds to spread. And so this is, this is a good patch and it's time to harvest. And I want to show you something about harvesting cleavers. You can see it's an annual and it has really shallow roots. And so if you come along and just yank on it, it'll just pull the roots out, okay? What you wanna do is leave it in a way so that after you harvest it, it still goes to seed, okay? So let me show you what I mean. You wanna leave it, you wanna cut the plant in a way that after you cut it, so if you can see here, on this plant, okay? So you've got here, you got here, and then you've got these little, see those flowers? Those teeny, 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 tiny flowers? That's gonna become the seed. That is what cleavers, gallium, coming from the root cleaver, uh, the word, root word cleave, to cleave. The seeds are so sticky, they're like burrs, they stick to you. In fact, I had a parent drop off my son recently and he just, or last fall, and he just started pulling them out and I was like, oh my God, don't pull my cleavers. He's like, those burrs, yeah, so they stick to you, they stick to your clothes. So you wanna, le you wanna harvest it in a way that these flowers are still on the plant, okay? So see, I would come here and clip right above that flower. Okay, so here's, here's the herb that I'm gonna harvest. And I clipped it right above the flower. And so the flower stays. And so yeah, so cleavers, you don't wanna just come and pull it out, right? You wanna give it, so I'm gonna, top, I'm gonna cut like the top six inches of this plant, okay? Right about here so that when I come back in two weeks, these little flowers are gonna be burrs. They're gonna be seeds. And you don't wanna harvest it once it goes to seed. You wanna harvest it before flower and during flower, but the seeds can be irritating to the body. So you harvest this. This is actually the perfect time. It's just coming into flower. And yeah, the, the, the other thing is that a lot of plants tend to grow with the cleaver, so you have to make sure you have 100% accurate identification and that you're not harvesting other plants with it. And yeah, it looks like the deer or somebody's been nibbling on this. Okay, so with this annual cleaver's harvest, I mean, I wait all year to do this and then it's here for like two weeks and then that's it, right? <laughs> And so again, I've been tending this patch for many years. I have a really, I love this patch. And so I don't just come out and harvest. I let her know a few days ago that it's almost harvest time. Well, she told me, <laughs> she's like, yeah. <laughs> so I, what I do is about a few days before I'm gonna harvest, I start communicating. I say, I'm gonna be harvesting in a couple days and um, please guide me, please help me, please, help me know how to do this in a good way and please guide me to which plants are best and how to harvest you in a way that you can flourish and so I do that for a couple days and I let her come to me in my dreams I think about her throughout the day I send little messages I wait for responses and I just try to tune in and and let her know that that I'm coming right and this patch has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and it's not just just the harvesting of the cleavers right it's the time it's it's me sitting out here in the wood it's the bird song it's the turkeys that I can hear can you hear the birds they just got quiet <laughs> but yeah it your harvesting is also just the medicine of harvesting is the, actually the harvesting itself is healing okay so when you get um, hundred percent you a accurate identification and really get to know your herbs and you cre you know find a spot that you can cultivate year after year um, that's really how harvesting is the best wild harvesting
Okay, so we're in my kitchen now and we're juicing. I'm juicing uh, this cleaver's harvest. Okay, and so you can see, I've already started, you can see how green this is. This isn't something you're just gonna drink, like guzzle, it's stronger than wheatgrass, it's full of minerals and vitamins, it's very, very clearing to the lymph and the liver, and you know, it's what I do is I make these little eight ounce jars and I fill it up and then I freeze it. So, and then this isn't a winter tonic, this is something that we drink during the spring and the beginning of summer. And here's what a lot of how we drink it. So this is a half gallon pitcher of water. So two quarts, half gallon, and here's eight ounces. And what I'll do is I'll put about two ounces in here, one to two ounces. And then this is our water. We'll, we'll drink this for the day. It really helps clear out lymph stagnation from the winter. If you uh, have eaten a heavy meal, it's very, very good for the lymph and for the liver and for the blood. And so this is, this is how we'll drink it. So you see, we just pour a cup of this. So you can see this is much more palatable. <laughs> Put a little lemon in there. You can't really taste it that much, but it's just a great, great spring tonic, okay? And so, yeah, we are juicing, right? I've got my juicer here, and this is how it works. You turn on the juicer. it. <laughs> Woo! And here's all the leftovers. And there is never one exact yield because some cleavers gets more water, some juicers are different. I really never know how much I'm going to get and I actually really know, never know how much I'm going to harvest until I get there. So this is like, this stuff is like giving yourself a blood transfusion. <laughs> Yeah, chlorophyll is one molecule different than human blood. And, but I, like I said, you wanna, this, this is pretty powerful stuff. So it, even just tasting it, you're gonna be like, whoa, that's intense. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Woo, so rich, so good for you. So again, yeah, we'll drink an ounce a day uh, per person uh, during the spring. We'll make tea out of it. Just, we'll just use, make tea out of, out of this herb, the plain herb. We'll do one tablespoon of fresh herb to one cup of water and we'll make tea. But right here we've made juice. And this juice I'm gonna freeze. And then <laughs> for the rest of the spring, we will make our, we'll, I'll take one of these out once a week. And this will go in the water we drink through. It'll go bad in a week. Just keep it in the fridge. Look at that. Yeah. And I like to get every last drop. Yeah. So I'm going to put this in the freezer. And this is our spring tonic. Asante. And there we have it. Cleaver's juice. I'm going to put some lids on these. Here. And we'll drink these over the next four to six weeks. Spring tonic. Just clear out our lymph. So there's your cleaver's juice. I hope you can tend, start growing and tend to a cleaver's patch in your yard. 
what this is, is this is one half gallon of water and two ounces of freshly juiced cleavers, okay? So this is a half gallon pitcher, and in that pitcher I put two ounces of cleavers juice. This stuff is intense, so what I do is I take two ounces out of this eight ounce jar, and I put it in this half a gallon pitcher, and that's what we drink.